Okay, this is my first oil change on the TRK 502. Uh, the mileage is 590.8, uh, only 10 miles till the 600 mark, so may as well change it now. A few things to bear in mind when you do an oil change. Firstly, oil filter and the right tools. So, what we'll be looking at here, we've got the sight glass for the oil, we've got the drain plug for the engine, which is going to be here somewhere, probably on the other side, and the oil filter, which is down under there. Here we can see down underneath the location of the sump drain plug. There are several things you need to do to change the oil. One is to remove the filler cap. This allows air into the crankcase and allows the oil to drain out at the bottom through this drain plug. You also need a warm engine. You don't need to take it for a ride. Just leave it ticking over until the temperature rises up to the running temperature and then switch the engine off and leave all the oil to drain back down through the engine into the sump which will take uh, for safety's sake we'll say 10 minutes okay tools needed for the job. I've got one of these rubber strap wrench thingies to get the old oil filter off, uh, a ratchet bar and a socket for the sump plug and this is a 19mm socket. Do not forget that you will also need a receptacle into which to drain the old engine oil. It tends to squirt out quite rapidly at first, so make sure you've got something wide enough to catch all of it, or you're going to have oil all over your garage floor or your driveway. Okay, everything should have drained down nicely by now, so we'll start by undoing the filler cap. These are usually really tight. Oh, this one's not very tight. Next up is the drain plug. I'm using the ratchet and an extension bar because it's quite well hidden under there. And the socket on the end. You just need to loosen it with the socket and then it will unscrew by hand. That allows you to catch hold of the drain bolt without dropping it into the container. Well after 600 miles that oil doesn't look too bad at all. However, having looked on the B box data, the bike was manufactured in late 2021. I bought it August 2022. So if that sump oil was put in at the factory, it was in there for 12 months before I rode the bike. I've got no idea if the dealers put fresh oil in or not, but uh, changing it should make a difference. I'm 
we just leave that to drain for another 10-15 minutes make sure it all comes out and then we can get the oil filter off it looks like we might have a magnetic sump plug which means that all of that gun on the end of it are all the little iron filings that have come off the engine during the running in period to stop it recirculating around which uh, it looks quite gungy might explain why the oil's in such good nick okay and this is what the sub plug looks like after all of that gunk has been wiped off it I've actually got a new ceiling washer to go on there but that one looks in very good condition you can usually reuse them two or three times before you need to get a new one and just to prove that this is magnetic there we go the oil is all just about finished now so once that is drained out completely we can put the sump plug back in in the meanwhile I'll get the oil filter off well my rubber strap wrench isn't shifting that filter at all they should just come undone uh, so that was done up rather tightly at the factory I'll try tool number two which is a chain wrench see if that does it that's the oil filter slackened off I actually have to use both of these tools to loosen it but once it's broken free I should be able to unscrew it by hand there we go and <coughs> and one old oil filter <coughs> let this drain out then I can pour the whole lot into a container and take it off to the recycling centre see the oil that is coming out it does look incredibly clean the oil has now pretty much stopped dripping out of the oil filter housing so I can get the new oil filter and put that in as you can see this is not a standard Benelli oil filter I've got one of these um, it's the high flow HF 303 RC and the reason I got that is because I know how difficult oil filters can be to get in and out this one comes with a welded on nut on the top so I can put a socket on there to soak that up and to get it undone which makes the whole job an awful lot easier they come in two varieties one is the same as the Benelli one which has done a perfectly good job that oil came out pretty quick and very clean uh, this one it's a known brand uh, they're used on hundreds of Japanese bike engines it's exactly the same one and it should do a perfect job one important thing to do when you fit a new oil filter there's a rubber ring around the top that ring needs 
a drop of oil on it. So, stick my finger in the old oil. And just run a quick bead of oil all around that rubber washer. There is a torque wrench setting for installing a new oil filter. The rule of thumb is that you screw it up hand tight, making sure you don't cross thread anything. Then, once it's done up hand tight, you turn it a quarter of a turn. And hey presto, one oil filter newly installed. The sump nut has to be tightened to 22 newton meters. So Luckily I've got two torque wrenches, this one will do the job. Set to 22 newton meters. Okay, that's the drain plug in, 22 newton meters. We've got a new oil filter in, neatly pinched up. All that remains now is to put the new oil in. And there is enough to do in this. Firstly, firstly, uh, there's a new oil filter on there, it's empty, so the best way to do it is to pour 3 litres of oil in, it takes 3.2 with a new oil filter, then run the engine for about a minute, that will fill up the oil filter. Then you can go back and top the oil up to the right level shown on the side glass on the other side of the engine. At that point you know you've got the right amount of oil in the engine. It goes without saying that you use a funnel to put the new oil in, otherwise it's going to pour all over the place. This is the oil I'm using, good brand and the right viscosity. It's 1050 oil, it's motorcycle oil, four stroke oil, and I bought it from the same shop that I bought the bike from. And here we go, first litres going in. And litre number two. And here goes litre number three. Okay, that's three litres in. So now I can put the filler plug back in and start the engine. Filler plug is in. Turn the key. leave all the oil in the engine to drain back down into the sump then I can check the sight glass and top up the oil to the correct level. Okay I've left the oil for about 10 minutes so we'll have a look and see if we can do this with the camera.
making sure the bike is upright and it's up to the lower level. So a few more millilitres in there and it should top it up nicely. There we go, all done. Topped up to exactly the coal mark. The, uh, £165 plus VAT, so close to £200 to do an oil change. So I've saved myself uh, £140 maybe. Uh, and it's very easy to do if you've got the right tools. It's nothing, it's not rocket science. The only other things I'm going to look at are uh, changing the front brake pads. I put EBC organic pads in the back, which means I now have a rear brake. And I might well do the same in the front because at walking pace they are really grabby and you end up stopping dead just before you thought you were going to and your feet are nowhere near the ground. So I might try and get some that work the same as they do on every other bike I've had. EBC organic pads are pretty good. Uh, the other one is the suspension on the front. It absorbs small bumps but it doesn't respond very quickly especially when you hit large bumps and as you can see there's a tide mark on these forks right there that's as far as the forks are going you've got all this wasted travel so I am trying to find out what grade of fork oil Benelli put in these forks and also take the caps off and see whether they've been overfilled, which would have caused hydro locking, which is not good news um, because it makes the suspension incredibly stiff. I and mean, the front wheel hits bumps and uh, it virtually flies off the ground. So I need to do something about that. I've also put EBC pads in the back, that was an easy job to do. There's videos on YouTube on how to do that. The secret to everything is having the right tools to do the job. I've owned loads of bikes over the years and built up a vast tool chest, uh, which makes everything a lot, lot easier. Okay, that's it from me. Happy biking!